What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overload here. We're going to go over some horror updates here in this video here today. Horror topics. We'll be going over Saw in the future with Saw 11. We'll be talking about Friday the 13th. We'll be talking about the update that came out from H45 regarding the Halloween franchise. We'll be talking about Scream 7, a brief recap of the video I put out this past weekend. And we'll be talking about Chucky Season 3. So just to start off with Saw 11. Saw 11 has been teased by Mark Berg, one of the producers in a late or in the latest interview with uh, Dan. Exertal. He said, Saw X ends where I think the audience will want to know what happens, and there's kind of a cliffhanger ending. K kind of? <laughs> I mean, it quite literally was. To me, anyway. And should this movie work, there are going to be a bunch of actors from the past who have already called wanting to know if they can come and be in the next movie since we're going back in time. In reference to the fact that Saw X is set in between Saw and Saw 2. Orin Coles, or Orin Coles also added this. We're very superstitious. We don't even start thinking about Saw 11 or the next movie until after the latest one is released. But I'd bet on it. I believe there's like a six to five month uh, window between Saw 2 and Saw 3. If, if I'm wrong, mis correct me down below. But I think there's like a few months in between Saw 2 and Saw, Saw 2 and Saw 3. So there's room for stories to be explored. Could they go back after more of those frauds connected to CC? Uh, I think her name is Cecilia. I'm going to call her CC. Uh, what was the fallout from Henry and what happened there? You know, there's so many different questions. What was the fallout from what else happened on in the mid credit, mid credit, uh, sequence that came out when the credit started rolling? What is going to go down with Amanda and how do we get to her betrayal of John? Will we see that unfold in Saw 11? So many different avenues you can take. Jumping into Friday the 13th, Ryan Turek from Blumhouse recently made comments about a Friday the 13th revival, some hopes that they have, I guess, while speaking with Inverse. He said, Jason Blum and I are definitely in agreement that the Friday the 13th series is a thing we would love to get our hands on. I really want to go back to the basics. You don't need too many ingredients for a Friday the 13th film. You need summer camp, you need campers, and you need Jason Voorhees in a mask. I mean, that's a simplified way of putting it, but fans who care about and know about how the series could definitely in, be improved in the quality department. I think we could argue that you also need a good story, strong cast, strong director, strong crew in general. I'm sure that's not lost on Mr. Turek. He's just basically simplifying his answer of the ingredients. And he's not wrong, but I would hope that's genuinely not all you think that you need. I, I trust that you don't. <laughs> But the Crystal Lake show we know is still expected to debut on Peacock sometime in the future. So we'll see how that goes. I honestly am becoming one of those fans who doesn't want Blumhouse obtaining rights to horror franchises since this upcoming Exorcist film and the handling of the last two Halloween films are just turning me off to the idea of Blumhouse dipping their hands or dipping their feet into any other existing IPs. I'd rather them just continue to distribute or produce and put out original IP content. That's all I want from them. Like, keep focus on Megan. Focus on the Megan franchise. Do what you got to do there. Friday the 13th, I, I don't know. I, I'm i just getting turned off by Blumhouse and their involvement in anything. I don't want them touching Freddy. I, don't, I damn sure don't want them touching Ghostface. Diving into Halloween. At age 45, Malika Cod, according to Halloween Daily News, shout out to you, had announced that a new documentary on his father, Mustafa Akkad, is coming. Teased big news for the Michael Myers franchise dropping before this Halloween and strongly hinted that a Halloween video game is on the horizon. So that leads me and many others, obviously to think some of that news that's been reported previously is more than true. A24 leading the bidding war for TV rights. Trank is being open to both film and TV projects. And of course the possibility of a six episode TV show set in the season of the witch universe. All of those were some of the things that came out last week from reliable sources. We'll see what ultimately comes out this month. If anything, I really didn't think that Mikey or this franchise in general would be talked about in the, in the capacity of a revival, not even a year after Halloween ends. It hasn't even been a year since Halloween ends, if I'm not mistaken. It hasn't been a year just yet. Also, Malika Cod, he allegedly made remarks about a diva actress in the series, and unfortunately, as much as I love her, all I can think of is Daniel Harris. But again, that's alleged. I don't really know if he said that. But let me know what you guys think about the possible announcement this month and what you think it will be. Since Halloween Daily News labeled it as big news for the Michael Myers franchise dropping before this Halloween, I'm inclined to think that we're going to see Michael Myers very soon. Not just a season of the witch 
adaptation or revival of sorts, but we're going to see Michael Myers announced in some capacity to have a big project on the way. Now, diving into Scream 7. Scream 7 will, as of now, be planning to take place during the Christmas season, but I wanted to let everyone know that Canada is still on the table. I do not know where shooting will exactly take place, but I do want to reiterate, Canada isn't completely off the table as a possibility. I also will add that I don't think there should be too much concern over this being a gimmicky thing, because Halloween and Scream 6 wasn't particularly overly prominent in the story either. It was basically just a backdrop. If anything, Christmas setting can be ironic to the story considering Ghostface always wants something and they want something yet again. And what do you get for Christmas? A gift. What better gift than knocking off every survivor from the face of the earth? That's how you can correlate it to the Christmas theme. That's the most I would want them to do anyway. I don't want anything over the top. Like I said, I don't want him killing someone with Rudolph's red nose. I don't need someone being killed with a Christmas tree or a Christmas tree ornament in some type of comical way. I don't I don't need that stuff. I, I would hope that that's just simply a backdrop and you retain a serious tone. That's all. Now, the last thing I want to touch on is Chucky season three. I saw some of you posting clip it snippets from the reviews that are continuing to come out ahead of the series debut season three. Anyway, this Wednesday. So season three will indeed feature some hospital shenanigans. I saw a review shared by one of you. I think it was you, Eli. So shout out to you guys. The hospital shenanigans are not scary. In fact, they are why I'm a little disappointed in this season when it comes to suspending my disbelief, because while I can't suspend my disbelief for this to work in general, you're talking about a killer doll. I never want the person creating the art to constantly just say, well, we took it this far with their suspension of disbelief. How far can we keep on pushing it until we cross a threshold? So trust me when I say nothing about the hospital shenanigans. They're not scary. Chucky, yes, will be on screen in a hospital gown. Very little about this is sensible and it raises several questions that I pray get answered in part two because so far it makes no sense. If anything, it's a sequence that I would argue isn't even necessary if you're telling me that you're going to be giving me the scariest or going back to the roots of being scary. Him in a hospital gown is not scary. <laughs> That's not scary. And in the context of it all, it's just laughable. There's so many different things about the first half that are the opposite of what we were told we would get. And that's why it's disappointing. That is why it was as if you just lied for me to simply trust that you would do it and you didn't do it. Now, granted, maybe you'll do it in the second half and I'll praise that. That's why I'm trying to be fair. And I gave it a 6.5 out of 10. If you keep it up, I am going to drop my my rating for the uh, season. And it still so far is the weakest. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notification. And there's a video in the description. I'll have links to my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know any movies, news, or reviews I'm going to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.